Hi, this is Rick Cromie, and I'm coming to you from beautiful Yellowstone Lake in gorgeous Yellowstone National Park. I want to tell you a little bit about the history behind how Yellowstone Park was discovered, and it's really owed to a person by the name of John Coulter. He was the first white man to stumble into this area, the, the, the geysers and the mud pots and this beautiful Yellowstone Lake, this whole region. He stumbled into it first. And, and he did so uh, by accident, largely. But uh, it started out really because he was looking for furs and they were doing a, a fur trading uh, type of business with the Indians. And John Coulter was on a, a bit of a mission to talk to various Indians that, to let them know that they were open for business. And when he stumbled into this area and, and saw the mud pots and saw the geysers and saw the incredible geological formations and activity that's here in Yellowstone National Park, well, John Coulter went back east and he was telling them all about it. And he was telling the mountain men about it. He said, you, gotta, you can't believe this place. And you know, for a long time, nobody did believe him. Nobody actually did believe it because it was so outrageous. The idea of mud boiling and geyser spurting and you know that type of activity was unheard of outside of this area. <laughs> There's also another story I gotta tell you about with John Coulter. Uh, he was also doing again some fur trapping and, and working his way up the Jefferson Fork of, of the Jefferson River there in Southwest Montana. And uh, he got himself into a bit of a nick, you might say. Uh, he was uh, he was working up the, the river. They were checking their traps that particular day. And about 500 to 600 Blackfeet Indian were on either side of the river. And they were making a lot of noise. And John Coulter and his, his friend Potts, uh, they basically realized that they were in, in for a, 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 a trouble. Um, the, the Indians basically said, come on come on in come ashore we want to talk with you we want to deal with you and uh, they did they slowly rode into shore and as they scooted up onto that bank uh, uh, you know uh, John Coulter who was at the front of the of the canoe uh, basically the, the first Indian to reach him reached down and stole the gun uh, they had a rifle sitting there at the front of the canoe and this Indian stole the rifle and it was Potts's rifle who was in the back. And at that point, John Coulter grabbed the rifle. They had a little bit of a tussle. John Coulter got it away from the Indian, gave it back to Potts. Potts decided something totally fateful at that moment. He decided that he was gonna leave. And he actually left Coulter standing on the bank. And he pushed back off into the river. And John Coulter at that point said, hey buddy, you, you gotta come back into shore. We're in, we're in a bit of a, of a nick here. This is not a good situation. And um, Potts decided to make it worse. He picked up his gun and fired at one of the Indians on shore and killed him, killed the man. At that point, um, let's just say, to, to quote John Coulter, he was riddled with arrows. Arrows came from both directions and basically riddled his body. And that was the end of Potts. But it wasn't the end of John Coulter. So the Indians decided they had to do something with John Coulter. And they stripped him naked, absolutely naked, and they sent him out about 500 yards away. And with a war whoop, they took off. And he took off in flight. And he had, again, about a 500 yard head start. And he's running as fast as he can, trying to find that Jefferson River. He knew where it was at, so he's heading in a, in a general direction. And he was running across prickly pear cacti and, and rocks and everything else, but he was literally running for his life. Now, he had told those Indians that he was slow afoot, but that wasn't true. He's actually fairly fast, and he was running for his life as fast as he could. And you know, the story goes that um, he got uh, basically fairly separate from, from the main bunch of Indians that were chasing him, but there were a few that were still on his tail, and particularly one that was gaining ground. He looked back at one point, the guy was about 100 yards back. He looked back again, he was about 50 yards back. He looked back again, he was about 20 yards back, and he's carrying a spear. And at that point, according to legend, John Coulter realized he's not gonna be able to outrun this particular Indian. And so he stopped and turned around, and he just raised his arms, he says, ah, like that. And the Indian, it surprised the Indian so much, the Indian literally stumbled and fell, and his, and his spear went into the ground and broke in half. At that point, John Coulter ran over, wrestled the Indian to the ground, grabbed his spear, and literally pinned him to the ground with his own spear. 
This gave John Coulter time again to get back up and start running because the other Indians were on his tail. Long story short, he literally found the Jefferson River just in time as the other Indians were coming over, these Blackfeet Indians looking for him. He jumped into the water, dived in, swam to an island, and there was a bunch of wood there that had kind of blown, you know, flowed up against the island. And at that point, he got in the, in the wood and held out there until the Indians f couldn't f find him and finally gave up. The bottom line is he got out of that scrape. And here's the thing about John Coulter. We know very little about him except for these types of stories. We know that he was on the Lewis and Clark uh, Trail. We know that he stumbled into Yellowstone and was the first white man in Yellowstone. We know that he had this scrape with the Blackfeet Indians. Uh, but a lot of those come back from legendary stories. You know, even when John Coulter was talking about Yellowstone, no one believed him. And it's these legendary stories that really, um, you know, we don't know truth we, from fiction, basically. But we do know that John Coulter was quite a man. He was quite a character. And uh, he passed away just a few years after these events. Didn't live to be very old himself. But John Coulter was quite the mountain man. And he's somebody you should know, especially if you're ever in Yellowstone, because he was the man, the first white man to find Yellowstone. And in 1872, Yellowstone National Park became a national park, our first and oldest national park.